Hey there, welcome to the Happy Even After podcast. So I am here today with a new friend of mine and I am so excited to have this conversation. So let me introduce you to Gabrielle Hartley. She is a nationally recognized divorce attorney, online mediator and divorce strategy coach. Gabrielle is known for her unique non-toxic approach to divorce and she keeps 99% of her cases out of the courtroom and at the negotiating table. She also teaches divorce lawyers how to be better lawyers. Gabrielle and her work have been featured in People Magazine, The New York Post, The New York Times, and The Yoga Journal, just to name a few. And she authored the book, Better Apart, which was endorsed by Gwyneth Paltrow, which was so cool. And we know when Gwyneth was going through her own divorce, she um, sort of revitalized the term consciously uncoupling. So um, she supports the book, so welcome today. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. So I am really excited to talk about this and talk about this to another professional who works in this space and really has um, a handle and a perspective on how do we help people get through the other side and not just drive up cost and drive towards litigation. So you have uh, promoted this term, the positive divorce movement, and that kind of goes against everything that the <laughs> word divorce actually means. So can you explain what that is and why it's positive? Absolutely. Um, that is such a great question. Thanks for asking. So. Um, the positive divorce movement is really to set a new tone around the global conversation about what divorce is. How many of us grew up in homes that were called broken? I know I did, right? And, and that's, that's really creating a negative internal narrative for all of us. Um, the positive divorce movement is the recognition that divorce doesn't have to be this shameful, stigmatizing experience. It's actually a launch pad to create something better. Right, because if if your marriage was great, you would actually still be there, presumably, right? And so it is a a conversation starter um, for all of us to start feeling better, no matter how the trajectory of our relationships in our life um, have been. And that's a, such a great point that you make. That term "broken" gets attached to divorce, and that in and of itself, you think, okay, it's broken. I'm broken. You know, right. I, I, I failed and it's, you know, I'm failing my kids and you, the name of your book is better apart, which is, you know, really contrary to what so many people say when they talk about divorce and you hear, oh, you're better off sticking it out for the kids and divorce is bad and your kids will be damaged from it. And why do you feel that sometimes someone, a couple is better apart than um, better together? Yeah, so some people can be better together. And I, you know, I'm definitely not like a divorce advocate, but when divorce right. has to happen, um, to your point about like feeling like, oh, am I creating a broken environment for your kids? Like I I am not divorced, but I grew up with divorced parents. And like my narrative is like, am I less than because my friend's parents are married? Like I carry that with me, even now with all the incredible amount of work that I've done throughout my life, my career, my writing, my speaking, and speaking to like hundreds, if not thousands of other people who have traveled through this path forward. Um, so I feel like the divorce process, um, the way it's navigated really makes all the difference. It's not the transitions between the households that matter, it's the conflict that's happening. And better to be apart and let your children be raised in two or at least one calm or reasonably calm environment than to have one household that's full of a lot of conflict. Now, that said, there can still be chaos in a house. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have to uh, part ways just because things aren't perfect. But, um, you know, if you're rising to a level where it's getting to be bad for everybody, it might be time to say goodbye. And you talk about this percentage that, um, that you can help 99% of couples uh, mediate and get through their divorce in a different way. So let's talk about the 1% though. What are making those people not be able to mediate or negotiate? Like why are they stuck and they're the people that are going to court? Yeah, so um, 
that 1% is the percent that gets all the media attention, right? Like everything about like slay the narcissist, like all the, the sort of mm -hmm. negative stuff, because those people really do need help, right? If you're dealing with a terrorist on the other side, and I don't mean someone who's bombing your house, literally, I mean someone who blows up every agreement that you make, um, you may not be able to settle. You also may not be able to settle if, you know, that 1%, um, your spouse hires somebody who has convinced your weaker spouse, right? Mm -hmm. That they need to go to court and fight about everything. So you could have a terrorist ex, you could have a terrorist ex lawyer, you could have a combination of the two. You may also have someone who has um, very um, bad executive function. So you need to at least bring them to the table by starting a case. Just because things start in litigation does not mean they have to end there. It's a very, very small number of cases that actually go all the way to trial. And when you think about the numbers of people that there are, the numbers of people that file divorce and how few divorce judges are there, it makes sense. Like for a year and a half when I was clerking in New York City for Judge Jeffrey Sunshine, um, for about a year, he and I were the only judge and court attorney resolving all the cases that wow. were coming through the entire borough. So when you think about that, just one person cannot possibly hear all the conflicts. So if you're in the middle of a divorce, and for your listeners, and if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, we're in litigation, there's always a way out. Always, always, always. Well, always with an asterisk, unless you have a total terrorist on the other side, in which case the court system is there for you. But even during the global pandemic, you know, you can still either find a collaborative lawyer who can work online with you um, or hire an online mediator. I work with people all over the country. Renee probably does this. You probably do the same. And, um, you know, you can find your path. So I, I know that was like a long-winded yeah. answer yeah. to your question. And, and I think that so often when we go to court, because I'm a litigator, I'm a, my, my, I'm a mediator in my heart, but I'm a litigator by trade. And often the people who are taking it to court are never going to be satisfied too. And there's a judge in Connecticut where I practice who has a piece of paper and he holds it up before every trial and says, this is your full story. And then he folds it in half and says, this is what your lawyers know about your story. Then he folds it again and says, this is what your lawyer is going to try to present to us. And then he folds it to this tiny little square and says, this is what I'm actually going to hear and the information I'm gonna to use to make a decision. That is so, I love that. Yeah, because you're never going to be able to fully tell your story in the way that you think that it needs to be heard. And, and judges have biases and they're only, they're picking things out and, and they're looking at this, not from an emotional perspective, but really as like a business transaction. So people are never satisfied. And there's, and there's, there's so much power in, in mediating because you get to make the decisions, right? Absolutely. And, and um, I, there's a piece that I um, put out maybe a year ago on Thrive Global called Beware the Stranger in Black Robes. And it's like mm. all the reasons um, the judge who I clerked for used to say, you don't want this stranger in black robes deciding your life. And, you know, nothing could be truer. They only hear a tiny little bit. What you think matters often does not have any relevancy in the eyes of the law. And even if it does, it may be downplayed significantly. Things get twisted and turned as Renee, you're more than well right. aware. So what is the better apart method? What can someone take from that book that you wrote and what you're out there advocating for? And it's really a mission for you because you've lived it personally and the work that you're doing is really to help people. That's right. And, and, I, um, and that's why I have this better apart blog where um, we can talk about wellness and co-parenting and finances, all ways to get you through your process, even if you wind up litigating. So the better apart, ra the radically, and you can see the book over here, on um, the radically positive way to separate is a, um, it's a path forward for you, regardless of how um, contentious your divorce may become. It's a path that you can take yourself through patience, respect, peace, 
mm. clarity and acceptance or forgiveness. Um, and it gives you exercises through mindfulness, meditation, writing exercises that help you sort of reframe and recalibrate the way you look at your life, the way you interact with yourself, and then the impact that you can actually have on your spouse. So I've taken sort of the whole mediation and divorce strategy a step further. Um, Elena Brower, who is a world-renowned yoga guru and meditation expert, includes, she's the one who provides the meditations and the yoga parts of the, the, uh, the method. But um, just to briefly summarize the five steps. So patience is the ability to take a step back and make space for something different. Oh, I love that. And so you can respond rather than react. Mm -hmm. um, respect is about learning how to reconnect with yourself, create boundaries about the people and circumstances that aren't serving you, shelving those that maybe you don't want to toss out the window, but um, put on hold while you're navigating forward. Um, clarity is about stepping away from the blame mm -hmm. and becoming the best visionary that you can be for yourself, right? Like, what do you want? Stop thinking about what they want. Get to your why instead of focusing on the what. Right. right. Peace is about starting to recognize the neutral instead of going negative and positive, mm -hmm. ca catastrophizing and marginalizing. Where's the spot of equanimity? Right. And we can build forward from there. And then, of course, compassion or self forgiveness is um, the unfortunate truth and recognition of, you know, um, um, holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting yes. the other person to die. And it doesn't release you. And like what, right. once you release yourself, then, you know, you have all the opportunity, all the freedom in the world. And so I, I wrote Better Apart because I, I felt like people sitting before me, um, they needed a hand to hold when they weren't with me. And it's such a solitary experience. I wanted to provide almost like a friend for people. You know, I'm, I'm pretty expensive also hourly. Not everybody can afford to coach or consult with me. So like you pick up the book and there's exercises right in there. You just make it a little bit more user-friendly to people. And I think often clients expect their attorneys to help them through that internal process of divorce. And I think some lawyers do it. I think the ones who are mindful and that's sort of part of that holistic approach, but most don't. And many, yeah. many are going to look at this. This is the process. This is the next step. And, you know, it, it's, they're removing that. So what you're providing is, is really like that best friend. That's not Mr. Google. Right, exactly. <laughs> that's not the best place to go. That's right. And actually the second part of the book, I take those five things and I infuse them into, okay, do I want a mediation? Do I want collaborative law? Do I, right. what do these things mean? Um, do I need litigation? Right. There's all analysis finances, you know, I break down what's assets, debts, um, income expenses, what do I need? What do I want? And we, and the same thing with co-parenting, what are the things we really need to think about? I really break down the law part and the emotional part. Um, and by the time you, you, you're through the whole book, you are really on a nice path forward. So I, you know, and, and so people, a lot of people will think that mediation isn't for them because they don't have an agreement on everything and there's conflict, but that's right. not the truth at all, right? Totally not. I'm sure you see the same thing in your mediation practice. In fact, um, the things you need to be aware of or beware of in mediation is make sure you know before you start mediation um, what the boundaries are around what you will accept. Mm -hmm. So you may want to go and talk to a lawyer to find out what you could get in court. You may not. You may just decide that I don't care what the law is. You, you could understand that the law is quite different everywhere in the country, right? And so you need to know what feels okay to you. Mm -hmm. You also need to know that your husband or wife may find out what the laws are. So you might as well figure them out. And then once you do that, you just go in and you, you, it's almost like create a container for yourself to make the decisions. Right. And so 
you know, if you give a little bit here, maybe you'll get a little bit more there and find a mediator who really has their 10,000 hours. Yeah. One who has the skill because I have been the attorney sitting at the table with a variety of mediators who come back, you come back to the second mediation session and it's like the first one never happens. And it's very frustrating because they dial the whole case back. Yeah. Find someone who really pays attention, takes good notes, or if, if they don't, you know, if they're a quick study, you bring them back, let me remind you, don't be afraid to say, wait a minute, last time we said this, what happened to that agreement? So you right. keep the process moving forward. You can get so much done. Sorry. It, no, that's such a great point because in, in my state anyway, you don't need any special training to hold yourself out there as a mediator. And in fact, non-lawyers can be mediators, which always is like if you're not working in that space or you're not it have a, a finger on what's happening in the courts, it, I think that that job becomes really difficult to do. Um, and so it's so important to find someone who's qualified and experience and and it's up to you to ask those questions where did you get your training how long have you been doing this you know what style because mediators have such different styles that's, too that's a really good point like the style i think like you know a lot of it is also instinct right like there may be somebody who like i i found that like i was really good at resolving cases right out of the box like when i was like 29 or 30 years old i was mm -hmm. it was just like that was my natural skill set Right. Um, and you know, I used to say no case too big or too small, like Encyclopedia Brown, right? Um, so, so, <laughs> sorry, nobody even knows what that joke. Is. <laughs> I <laughs> do. <laughs> um, so, so, um, but you you raise a really good point about what's the style? Is this evaluative? You know, right. are we going to weigh? Is, do you want your mediator to weigh in? It's okay if you get a mediator who doesn't know the law, as long as they. No, number one, know what they don't know. Right, right. Number two, they know all the issues to address. Number three, they understand the concept of creating a agreement that is specific because as you and I both know, if you go into court with agreements to agree, husband and wife believe that they can arrive amicably at a parenting plan. No, 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 there's nothing to enforce. It's gonna take you six months to a year to see your kids. Get a plan in place. If you decide you need to change it afterward, that is absolutely fine, but get a plan in place so you have something to hang your hat on in court. Right, and in reality check too, uh, what their agreement is, because sometimes something on paper and in actual reality doesn't work. Um, and so it's being able to notice something that might be a bump in the road and being able to say, well, what if something like this happens? How do we, how are you going to address that? If you're going to leave holidays um, completely out of the picture, what if there's a disagreement? How are you going to resolve it? Totally. I mean, sometimes um, I was working on an agreement with somebody. I don't, I don't even know, are we on Monday? I don't know what day we're on right now. <laughs> something like that. Week, um, I was working with, with a couple and they kept thinking they arrived at agreement. I kept saying, well, what about this? And what about mm -hmm. that? What about this? And I was like, oh my gosh, you guys must think I'm so negative. But the fact of the matter is you need to think things through, not to a ridiculous end. Obviously you can't anticipate everything, but um, especially if you have very young kids, there are certain right. things that are predictable. It's not a change in circumstances when your kid turns five and goes to kindergarten. I mean, maybe it is, but like it's it, you can anticipate that. So if you've got a, a four-year-old and a two-year-old and you're making a parenting plan based on preschool, you might as well put a, a clause that says, you know, preschool parenting plan. Or if you have right. someone who's, your spouse works overnights, but they're not going to be third, you know, their third shift now, or they have to work every Sunday now put in or it's quarantine now right? right it's quarantine so here's our quarantine schedule here's the schedule that we will have when the situation when and if the situation becomes more normative meaning like everybody works eight to six nine to five whatever the new normal becomes are you finding that because of the current situation in the pandemic and courts are um some are still closed and they're trickling open or at a very limited capacity that more people are looking to mediate and resolve outside of court absolutely i mean they have there's no access to court i'm getting calls for from so many lawyers who are trying to mediate asking me for 
guidance about how to handle situations or to co-mediate with them because people are really just trying to figure it out. Meaning lawyers want to help their clients. I know sometimes it doesn't seem like that, but many lawyers really do want to help their clients. And um, if they don't have the, the training or the background or they're so used to making everything into a fight, that could be their default. You know, as, as you, you probably realize if you're getting divorced right now, I know Renee and I both know this, at every turn, there is potential to cause a fight. Like right. so many things can blow up. As people are talking about things, to me, my brain automatically goes to, what if this, what if that? Right. Right. And so that's a really good point that you just made that even if someone is in the middle of the divorce process and there are lawyers involved, you can still mediate, even though you didn't start that way and you can do it with your lawyers. You can, the people, um, the couple can go to a mediator on their own and then have their lawyers check everything and, and review it all. Um, but that's an option too. And it's probably a really good one knowing or not knowing when the courts are really going to be fully operational again and how long this is going to take. Totally. And, and, um, you know, bringing your lawyers into the process, literally into the room, I would say that if you are someone who absolutely can't stand up for themselves, that's like, or when you really can't wrap your head around numbers at all, that might be appropriate. I do think sometimes lawyers cause a lot of problems because they're so used to fighting. Mm -hmm. Um, But you might find that you need a lawyer just to have your say. Now, I don't know what you're finding, Renee, but I'm finding that mediating online is actually making some of those hard dynamics easier because I am really more able to control the conversation. So it may be that the person who's more passive takes a longer time to express what they need, but it's just a more controllable environment because there's less body language, mm-hmm. there's less triggering happening. Yeah, that's a good and point. And we're able to get a lot more done, even in contentious dynamics. Yeah, you know, throwing the dirty look across the table loses a lot of impact when you're on Zoom. Right. Also, <laughs> we all see the dirty look. We're all on the same page. Right. <laughs> that's a great point. So where can, where can someone find you? How can someone work with you? Um, you talked about your blog, which has really great information out there. Where can we go to learn more about what you're doing or even work with you? Yeah. So, um, first of all, if you want to go to gabriellehartley.com, you can grab a survive and thrive, um, bundle and that will also deliver to you the better apart blog weekly in your inbox where you get a piece of it and you'll be navigated over to the blog itself the better apart blog is um it's basically an online magazine that has articles by professionals all over the world who are talking about wellness uh, co-parenting and finance and how to move forward in a good way. I've got some really wonderful budget sheets, cheat sheets, and that kind of thing is there. Um, So if you wanna work with me, all of that is just right at gabriellehartley.com. If you'd like to listen to other podcasts or TV shows or anything like that, it's all on the media page. Um, Everything should be right there. And I'm also going to create a special page just for your listeners. So I'll give you that information. All right. Fabulous. Now I'm not letting you leave just yet though, because I have another question for you. Uh, There's definitely a listener out there who feels like they're stuck. Um, The divorce process is scary, or maybe they're afraid of the unknown and what life looks like on the other side. What can you say to them? I would tell them to do the, um, the VER protocol, which is um, visualize, internalize, and realize it's part of the clarity piece of the Better Apart process. Go ahead and order yourself a copy of Better Apart um, or do the six-week online masterclass, which comes with a free um, complimentary mini session with me directly. Um, And you will be navigated forward to get your head more clear, more focused, and get you unstuck, get you out of that inner loop that is just keeping you up at night and making you feel down during the day. And there's hope, right? 
You there is that. always hope. There is always hope. There is always new life. There is always something better. And there are also, um, you know, if you're on social media at all, I know a lot of people are very anti-social media, but there are so many incredible, positive divorce people out there. If you go, you know, look in my feed or Renee's feed, you can see who we're following and who's following us. And you can get lots of great um, other people to get a little bit of more inspiration in your inbox yeah. across different platforms. And I, what I find really cool is that, um, we're all over the world. We're just in little pockets. And the more and more people who really are watching, you know, the girlfriend's guide to divorce versus war of the roses, the mm -hmm. more that's going to become normal. You will be okay. Just remember, you're so not alone. Like 50% of all people are either divorced, their parents are divorced, their best friends are divorced. And um, we don't need to all wear a big scarlet D on our shirts, mm -hmm. right? We're just, you're okay. I'm okay. Like, it's just, this is just life. So it's time to start feeling good about yourself right now. Yeah. And, and I love that. Find your tribe. You don't need everybody, but you do need somebody. So find your support system and it can be someone like you. It can be you know, just people that you're following in the social media world, but people who are in a positive space and aren't the ones bringing more conflict um, to the situation. And, and one little tip of, uh, to that, um, which I don't know if I highlighted enough, when I was talking about shelving relationships that don't work for you, during this process, you're going to have people who you love, who you've been so close to your whole life. It could be your mother. It could be your best friend. It could be, you know, your sister, whatever. They may just be more negatively oriented. They may not really be able to empathize with you. Don't, it doesn't mean you need to cut off your relationship with them. All it means is that you sort of take a break, put on pause the relationship, even tell them, I'm going through something really hard right now. I love you so much. I just need some time to sort things through. You don't need to make it about them. You don't need to have a whole big drama. Just say, you know, when I come out on the other side, you know, I hope that you'll still be there for me if you need to really take a break. If you need to just dial back, you can do the same thing. Maybe don't talk to your best friend five times a day, limit it to once a week. Right. So you just cut out a little bit there, but that's okay. Are you there, Gabrielle? You froze. All right. So it looks like you just froze. So um, you probably, right. oh, there you hear me. Yep. yep. Uh, that's why we have editing. <laughs> I'm right here. I can, I can kind of hear you, but your, your screen is frozen. Yeah, I'm here. Hmm, your internet. Back. 